Well said by Hans Olsen earlier this football season. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. In fact, we want more Hans, so let's bring him in and have him join us live on the show to discuss schedule superlatives and more. Hans, great to have you back on BYU Sports Nation. How are you this morning? Uh, great now that I get to be on with you guys. You know, you're two of my favorites. <laughs> Love hanging out with you guys. You tell like, everybody that. You stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We were just talking about it, man. We talk for a living. This is, this is a great way to make a living. No doubt about it. Okay, it's time for some schedule superlatives, Hans. We just went through five, and uh, we started kind of uh, with, well, I'm most interested in what game you have circled second, okay? So, uh, Jerem and I, we varied on our answers there, but aside from Utah, because that's number one, what's the game you have circled second as the most intriguing or most interesting in your list? Well, for me, it's going to be Central Florida in Orlando. I, I love Florida, and Central Florida is going to be interesting. You know, they go out there and they get K.J. Jefferson. They got R.J. Harvey returning. R.J. Harvey's the guy that ran for nearly 1,500 yards last year, was responsible for 18 touchdowns. Solid running back. And then you add K.J. Jefferson that BYU fans are familiar with. Guy that played for Arkansas and a guy that is very dynamic. And if they can get him to calm down his opinions and his thoughts of himself and listen very well and do what they ask him to do, that could be a really interesting team in Orlando. Plus, I heard you guys talking about the road trips. That's the one I've got circled. Can't wait to go back to Orlando. I have some property out there, and I can't wait just to go out there middle October and go hang out and enjoy that beautiful Florida weather. Well, it looks like we're going with you then because it'll be a free stay. Uh, okay, what's, what's the toughest game on the schedule? Well, every one of these is pretty tough, but, you know, I'll probably go with the University of Utah. Maybe, maybe Arizona with Noah Fafita, but it's probably going to be that rivalry game. Depending on where Cam Rising is at the time and Brant Keithy is at the time and, and how they're doing with their health, I think that is going to be a very difficult game. But honestly, guys, you could throw Kansas in there with Devin Neal and Jalen Daniels. It's going to be really tough. Um, I think the Kansas State is going to be really tough with DJ Giddens and Avery Johnson and it's just the, the list goes on and on. But if I, if I had to really point out one, it's probably going to be that rivalry game. It's going to be a lot on the line. Hey, listen, BYU fans know all too well that whether Utah's playing their starting quarterback or their backup quarterback, it seems to, it seems to bode well for Utah. So it doesn't really matter if Cam Rising's playing in that game because Utah's backups seem to play well against BYU. Well, they do. And, you know, when I looked at this schedule, guys, my first thought, my very first impression was – BYU better get themselves a better defensive line. And Jay Hill has got a lot of work to do to put a defense in front of these running backs that they're going to see because these running backs that they're going to see are fantastic. You know, I, I mentioned uh, one in R.J. Harvey, but you go through D.J. Giddens, you go through Ollie Gordon, you go through Devin Neal, and, you know, it's not – just the running backs, the quarterbacks across the board are great. And, you know, we failed to mention at SMU, uh, the second non-conference game of the season in Dallas, and SMU's got Preston Stone. And you know, that's a guy that threw for 3,200 yards, yeah. and and he, he had 32 total touchdowns. So BYU – had better put together a defensive line because you lose Jackson Cravens, you, you lose Nice Amahe, and, you know, you're starting to try to work in David Latu a little bit more, and you're trying to find some interior guys that can do some work. But if you really want to get competitive in the Big 12 this year, you better put a defensive front out there that can get pressure, a defensive front out there that can take on combos, can jam up doubles, and can allow linebackers to move, which, by the way, losing Max Tooley and A.J. Bonchon and the amount of tackles that they brought, you're going to need extra defensive linemen to clean up for guys like Harrison Taggart or Ciale Estera or some of these guys. You're going to need big, strong, physical, crazy, not bubbling the live of field defensive linemen <laughs> if you want to take on these Big 12 teams and these running backs. 
We don't have the cloning technology to uh, clone you quite yet, but if we did, I think you'd be one of the first. So uh, just <laughs> FYI, please, please give us your permission to do that later. Um, okay, what's the biggest trap game on the schedule? I'm wondering if it is the SMU just to start the season. Mm. You know, you're going to clean things up with Southern Illinois and then head to Dallas. And that's an SMU team that won the AAC last year and – they were actually able to win the AAC, their final game of the season. They lost Preston Stone, and they were still able to win it. Preston Stone ended up breaking his leg against Navy. And so, I, you know, I don't get too far into the schedule before I'm like, uh, no better better sleep on this. Yeah. SMU is very good, yeah. and they're well coached, and that is going to be a tough road game. And if you think that you're just going to sleepwalk through Southern Illinois and SMU and Wyoming, you're, you're crazy. SMU has a lot of potential to be a, a tough game. And, and I don't think you can look at Arizona as a trap game or something that could catch you off guard. Arizona is just going to be a spectacular team. I know that they're going through a coaching change, but, you know, they get San Jose State's coach. And San Jose State's coach just built a quarterback for a few years that in, in Chevron Cordero that was lights out. He was awesome. So now he gets to come in and work with Noah Fafita, and Arizona becomes a real problem. And we haven't even really talked about Air, uh, Oklahoma State with Ollie Gordon and Alan Bowman. You know, that, that Oklahoma State game is going to be miserable too. For so, sure. And it's a week after Arizona. Hey, thanks for the good news here, Hans. <laughs> It's, guys, it's tough, man. It, it is tough, and, and that's why, like, I, I need I need four defensive tackles that are ready to anchor down and be some of the best in the country. And I need I need two defensive ends that can that can run downs one through four, and then I need two defensive ends that can give me rushes on critical downs. That's it. I, I need better defensive line. I need better defensive line play. I need them to be cleaner, stronger. I need them to be better up front. You know, I know we can focus on the quarterbacks because I, I don't, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling like BYU's quarterback situation is the best quarterback situation either. But I would rather spend time talking about the needs of a defensive front that can control some of these powerful offensive lines that I, that I got to watch firsthand in the Big 12 and get really serious about stopping the run and playing big boy defense. Hans Olsen of KSL Sports Zone, BYU football radio analyst, is on BYU Sports Nation. We'll finish with this fifth and final superlative question as it pertains to the schedule. Which of BYU's nine Big 12 games would you dub as the most winnable? Arizona State. And I think uh, Jaden Rashada and Arizona State to finish the season. And I know that that's at Sun Devil Stadium. I played there, I think one, I think it might have been twice. I know it was once for sure. Uh, and I played back there when, when they actually were decent and had a rowdy crowd and, and things were kind of fun and crazy. Arizona State in a in a bad situation. So you, you've, you, you've got Arizona State November 23rd and then you finish out with Houston. I'm circling that Arizona State game as one that it's like, all right, they should win that game. At least you would hope. In 1997, your freshman year, that was the last time BYU's visited Arizona State on the road, which is which is crazy. So it'll be fun. That first play, I think they just threw uh, to Ben Cahoon, like a 50-yard bomb or something, if I recall. Yeah, it was, that, that, it was, it was a win for BYU against that, a ranked Arizona State team. That was a good one. You mentioned a moment ago you have some concerns about the quarterback position for BYU. Tell, tell us more about your thoughts on that. Well, I, I just – been watching film on Gary Bohannon, and, and I'm not overly sold on him. Hopefully, he can reinvent himself, and Aaron Roderick and he can collaborate and work together and, you know, build something that we saw with Zach Wilson or Jaron Hall. But I, I I think that there are some things there with Gary Bohannon that, I, that need to be cleaned up. Um, and I'm hoping that he can really learn to quickly release the ball. And, and a clean, quick release and, and get it to his weapons. Um, you know, we we saw enough from Keaton Slovis to know that uh, Aaron Roderick still knows what he's doing and, and is a, still a great quarterback's coach because I, I do think that Keaton had some solid moments, but 
we saw that that offense needs something in particular with the with the quarterback to really click in Aaron Rodgers' offense. There's there's kind of a dual usage that you need, and I I, I really did like covering Retzloff. I did, and I and I like Jake Retzloff. Um, he's got a long way to go to be a a Big Twelve high level quarterback. Uh, you know, and, and it's crazy, guys. I, I wake up at night, and I still have visions of the pick six against Oklahoma. Oh, my gosh. And that's just, it's, it's just the way my brain works. And it, and the collapse against Oklahoma State, they, they should have won that game. And and so I, I look at the quarterback room, and I think, all right, there's not real proven greatness in there. There's a lot of clay that Aaron Roderick is going to have to mold and, and believe me, he's an artist and he's creative, but he's got a lot of work to do mm. with the quarterbacks that he's currently got in that room to be truly competitive in the Big 12. All right, Hans, uh, in 15 seconds, because we teased it, what do you think of the November 9th date for BYU-Utah? Are you in favor or do you hate it? I hate it. And, you know, I see all the excuses around it. And, oh, well, we're spreading <laughs> out the rivalry games. And, oh, we're trying to make it the marquee game. And I, and I, I don't like it. I don't like it. You know, you've got different time slots for games that run throughout the day. People are like, well, you don't want it to butt heads with Michigan. <laughs> it's like there's, there's different time slots. Put it in a time spot that, look, if it's got to kick at 10 o'clock in the morning, kick it at 10 o'clock in the morning and make it the marquee matchup of the morning or the marquee matchup of 8 o'clock p.m. or 8.15 p.m. I don't care. But put it on that rivalry weekend that we all circle, that we know has a huge impact, that we all anticipate. And by the way, I've got some other problems with this. You know, you put a bye week, you put a bye week before that game, and all that does is it allows you to stew in your anxieties for two weeks as a player. Like, I, I would rather play that on a short week. Look, play me on a on a Saturday and then play that rivalry game on a Thursday. So I have a short week so I don't have to hear my parents say, oh, can you get Aunt Becky some tickets? And, oh, did you know that, that your uncle's son plays on Utah? And, oh, did you know? And you're just like, I don't want to hear anymore i just want to play the stupid game and now we got to talk about this thing for two weeks i'd rather have the bye week after the rivalry game so that i can recover emotionally <laughs> physically so i don't like this oh well we gave you each a bye week okay all you did is boost anxiety and it's going to be a crazy couple of weeks that's as a so, player no, as media I, member this is gold but jerry i i, I really don't like anything about what they did with this rivalry game. <laughs> I wish you'd bring an opinion to this I program, it. Hans. I love it. At some it, point, Hans. you will. <laughs> uh, hey, it's great to talk to you, my friend. Uh, I know we're thick in the middle of basketball season, but it, we got the football schedule. We had to bring you on. So thanks for taking some time with us, man. You guys do great work. Thanks for having me on for a few minutes. Appreciate you. You got a Hans Olsen with us for the schedule superlatives topic. Yeah. One of the best linemen to ever do it at BYU. Let's at go. What, at what